Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So a year ago, I wanted to build an outdoor, rainproof, 12 volt solar power system. So I ended up building it with components and I built it inside of this enclosure right here. And it has been running for an entire year. So let's take a look at it and see how it's done. So I'm doing this review. It is 7.44 in the morning. The sun has not come up. In fact, this system only really gets sun in the afternoon because of all of these trees on this side. So right now it is powered by two 200 watt Renogy Shadow Flux panels. So they're shade resistant panels, so that probably helps a little bit. I originally tried to run this system on one 200 watt panel and the uh, system would constantly get a low battery. So once I added, so that I have 400 watts of solar, the systems actually ran fine the entire time since then. So right here, I just got a battery box like you'd use like on a trolling motor battery. And I have not opened this up. Hopefully there's no wasps inside. I have not opened this up for a year. And everything looks fine. What we got in here is we do have a battery uh, breaker right here on the battery. And this is a 12 volt. This is a lead time battery. And this is a heated lithium battery. Now, originally I talked about putting a heated battery inside of some type of enclosure that we could insulate or maybe an old cooler, something that could help insulate it so that it would stay warm in the winter time when it was heating itself. I never did that and it ended up running fine all winter long. Go ahead and open the enclosure, take a look inside of here and there we are. You can see here's our 60 amp charge controller. So we could actually do a total of 800 watts of solar on here, but we're just doing 400. And then we got the uh, uh, lead time 2000 watt inverter in here. So as we look at the charge controller, 13.2 volts, it says that it thinks the battery is 100%. I kind of question that. And then we're putting in 0.4 amps. It has used a total of 70 kilowatt hours since this has been in in, you know, installed. So what I have found out about this combination of, you know, the 2000 watt inverter and the charge controller, when the battery gets low, the first thing to shut down is the inverter. It will stop, it'll turn off and it will beep. And you can hear that beep fairly far away. Um, but when you look at this charge controller and then you scroll up to see the battery state of charge, uh, a lot of times it'll be around like 35, 40% state of charge. And to me, either the inverter is shutting off too early or the state of charge is incorrect on the charge controller. I'm just not sure which one. So checking out the rainproof enclosure, as we look in here, the only thing you see is you do see uh, little specks in here. These are little like gnats, really small gnats. And they had to come in through this little screen right here. So that's really the only insects that we got in here. They're super tiny. And then if we look here, there is a little bit of a line of like water, maybe a little bit of water gun in here. It comes across here. And I think it's because of this side connection here. This is the battery shut off uh, switch. Here it is on the outside. You can see there's a little water line right there, but I think there was a little O-ring with that. And I don't think maybe I got the hole cut as good as I could. So I think that's the only leak that I have is just where the battery disconnect is. So we do have a cooling fan in here to help keep all of this cool. So air comes in over here, blows out over here. Each side has a little rain hood to keep the rain out. And then there's this thermostat that will control the fan on and off. Now I originally had that set at 30 degrees Celsius. And I think that that ends up being about 86 degrees. Well, it's always about 86 degrees or higher outside all the time in the summer. So this fan, ran all the time, even sometimes at night, this fan would be running and I was thinking it was helping drain the battery. So I ended up, I turned that up to 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, our body temperature. And uh, so close to hundred degrees and it has run a lot better since then. So on the outside of the panel, we have an outdoor 120 volt outlet. And when we originally set this up, we used it to run a one horsepower a uh, sprinkler pump and we used it to irrigate from our pond to the garden and we ran it that way for a while and then we moved it over here and now we have a electric fence charger plugged into it and it's been powering electric fence here on the farm side of the property ever since you know late last year 
And ever since I adjusted the temperature on the fan and I added the second solar panel, everything has run fine. I haven't heard the battery. I haven't heard the beeping from the inverter when the battery is dead. So everything has run fine since then. So if one of you is wanting to build something similar to this and mimic this same setup, uh, one thing I would say is you might use some silicone caulking around any of the components on the side to help seal those so no water gets in the side. Uh, ideally on an outdoor enclosure like this, you do want to do, you know, under, you know, your connections underneath. And we do have a drain. That's a drain. That's a vent right there, a drain. So if water does get in the enclosure, it will drain out. But ideally on an outdoor enclosure, you would try to do all your connections on the bottom. And then the other thing I would suggest is probably adding a second battery. We just have the 100 amp hour, 12 volt heated battery down here. I think that it would be better for a minimum of two because I am using this as a light load right now. It's just a continuous load to, to test it. But if I was running that well pump again, I would definitely have wanted to have more batteries, maybe even more solar panels. Now I probably won't do another update on this system until we have some sort of problem with it or if we end up relocating it, setting it up differently. But if you guys are interested in building an enclosure like this, I will put a link to the original video on how we, we uh, hooked everything up, wired it up, put it all together. It may be a good resource for you. So hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.